The Chris Vernon Show is brought to you by WinBet, the official sportsbook partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. WinBet is bringing you the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. You can place bets on games on any major sport, including on NBA teams like your Memphis Grizzlies. Sign up today. Use the promo code GRIZZ. 400 G R I Z Z 400 and after placing your first $5 wager you'll receive $400 to bet with. There's no better way to enjoy basketball than with some extra winnings in your pocket to use for all your favorite bets. Betting is a team sport. Join the Win Bet team and bet with the best. Must be physically located in Tennessee and 21 years of age or older to participate. If you or someone you know needs assistance with a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. Let's transition into our favorite all-time sixth man. This one was fun guess. to do. Okay, let's go. Number one, Manu Ginobili. There's like a guard. move that he brought to the NBA that is still done today, the Eurostep. Like, there you that's go. That's Manu. That, that, without Manu, we have no Eurostep. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. IMHO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Check out the all-new WinBet Sports Bar located at FedEx Forum, just off Bill Street Alley. Open every event night plus non-event Saturday and Sunday starting at 11 a.m. The WinBet Sports Bar is your lock for the best local brews, food, and all the games. Sports fans looking for action and a little extra juice can receive exclusive in-bar only promotion, including odds, boosts, free bets, and more from the WinBet Sportsbook app. Plus, watch all the games. College and Pro with over 30 TVs and Sunday NFL tickets. Parking is free for guests and available in the Gossett Motors Garage. For more information, go to FedEx Form.com. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Ready on take one? Ready. Okay, this is a crucial moment of the audiobook, The Big Escape. Chapter 9. They had waited long enough when finally the clock struck midnight and... Wait, where are you going? Nope. When you need a taco, you need a taco. Try the beefy melt and Viesta veggie burritos. Just $2 each, only a Taco Bell. And that's my time. I'm not the voiceover guy, too, but uh, guess I'll read the legal copy. At participating Taco Bell source for a limited time only. Price and participation vary. Tax extra. Taco Bell vegetarian items allow for dairy and egg consumption. Preparation methods could lead to cross contact with me. Visit TacoBell.com for full details. Hear that? That's the plumpest, juiciest hot dogs you've ever seen getting their grill on. But we both know what'll make it sound even better. Oh, yeah. It's a Pepsi to go with your hot dog. Because when you're chomping on America's favorite meal, relish, mustard, and onions perfectly blending into a crescendo of flavor, there's only one thing that makes everything about that moment better. A cold, refreshing Pepsi. See what I mean? It's like music to my ears. Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Ah. Live from FedEx Forum, this is the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by Wim Bat. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon.
noon on GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Farnan. Show! Welcome, 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 welcome. It is a Friday, January 14th, 2022 edition of the show. The win streak continues. It's now at 11. The Grizzlies won again. They are playing against the Dallas Mavericks tonight at FedEx Forum. Before they get the weekend off and they're playing Monday in the MLK game as they try to extend the win streak. We'll get to the news and notes of the day. We will get you ready for the weekend. There's a massive NFL playoff weekend ahead. Memphis Tigers going to be in action. It's a Friday. It's cold. The smile. Let's do it. Turn it up. Everybody's having a good day. All right, we got a lot to get to. Uh, it was a fun night at FedEx Forum last night. Uh, tonight, it's a late one as the Grizzlies are going to play a 9 o'clock game against the Dallas Mavericks uh, with the opportunity to create uh, even more separation between them and Dallas in the standing. So a big game. There's going to be no Chris Stapps Porzingis for the Dallas Mavericks tonight. Uh, And so, anyways, uh, last night was super fun. It didn't look that great for a while, certainly the first half. Once you get to halftime, it kind of felt like, "Eh, you know, not playing all that well. You know, all great things come to an end. This team has not been the easiest matchup for the Grizzlies. And you may just not have an answer for Anthony Edwards in this one. Um, who had a monster first half. And then the game flipped in the third quarter. The Grizzlies were able to come out with a win. And John Conchar, whose jersey I am donning today, 15 points, 17 rebounds, dagger three. <laughs> when it mattered most, and gets mobbed by his teammates after the game. Sports, fun, rebounding, basketball game, Menards, Crocs, Crocs, John Conchar, the world took notice last night. I saw a uh, tweet this morning that said he wears 46 because he's twice as good as Jordan. John Conchar. What a night at FedEx Forum. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Band, the Cedar Sack, a.k.a. John McMahon, the American, a.k.a. the Grim Roser. Johnny, Johnny, John Cap, John Lance. What up? Yeah, I know you think it seems like I'm like the the frog, like I look like the frog. Yep. But reveal oh, jitty season approaching. <laughs> jitty season approaching. <laughs> you ain't the only one with jitty gear. You ain't the only one with jitty gear. Let's uh, go. Devin Walker's here. He is the microphone mangler. He is Senor Quasadilla. He's Mr. Mass. He's Navajo Joe. Yep. He is yep. the. Oh, hold on. I got you. Hold on. I got you. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, yeah. Yeah. Jitty for the city. Well, I will say, I woke up uh, in a very good mood. I want to say. Here we go. Here we go. 8 by 10, sign John Conchor. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Indiana, Fort Wayne, Mastodons represent. Yeah, on John Conchar Day. Yeah. He has his own day on March 29th every day. It's John Conchar Day. So. Damn right. Shout out GD, bro. I, 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 I don't know why that that's not a national holiday now. How do it we? I, I, if Joe Biden so does funny. not declare John Conchar Day March 29th the national holiday, I something's mean, wrong. That was like a movie last night. 
17 rebounds is so outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. It's outrageous. That's the number. most among any NBA guard this season off the bench. <laughs> That's Dennis Rodchar. Do Dennis you know? Rodchar. Hey, do you know who holds the Grizzlies record for uh, rebounds off the bench? Oh, I thought you meant like in a game. I was like Zach Randolph yeah, <laughs> uh, off the bench. He's the one that holds it off the bench. Oh, I will okay. tell you. Oh, he does. Oh, was it the 18. Raptors? Was it the Raptors game? Eighteen. When the year off the, bench. the year he came off was it? Well, I wonder I if it know. was one of the Fisdale games or one of the games when he you know when he came back that season from injury. Eighteen rebounds. Jeez, That's Zebo. Jitty for the city. <laughs> Jitty. Jitty for the city. Jitty for the city. With 17 rebounds. Jitty season approaching. 15 points. An unbelievable SWAT steal. Oh, man. Uh, on the baseline. And then the, the, put d- the, the putback put dunk. Can we run that putback right now? Swing, swing. That's the 17th rebound, too. The yeah. 17th rebound was the best one. Putback dunk and then swing, swing. Ball goes to Jitty. Bangs a three. When it uh, matters most, it was unbelievable, and it's so perfect because it's like coming on the heels of the vi- the clip that had kind of gone viral of Skip Bayless talking about him. It's the first time like a real national like oh, television yeah. guy so had mentioned too. him. Skip Bayless of all people talking, he's like, like who Dude. is this guy? He just comes in and he. <laughs> Freaking makes everything Dude. he takes. Like, who is he? And then, His Jitty. Let's and then go. Dunk the shot. Day, dunk shot. And then ne- the day that clip goes viral, he goes out and has 15 and 17. Let me tell you something super hilarious. So oh. this oh, morning, wet. this morning as I'm recording the mismatch, <laughs> Kevin O'Connor and I are talking about him. And, uh, and then we get done afterwards. And I said something about something on Twitter. And he's like, is Concha on there? And I was like, yeah. I was like, but it's weird. It's not like his name. It's like something 55, and he's got a picture of him in a high school uniform. <laughs> yes. And whatever. And so he He's not go- verified either, by the way. He goes and looks it up, and he goes, wait, is this him? He's n- he's not verified, and he's got like 2,000 followers? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's him. That's him. <laughs> and his, his bio says, every day we jit. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't believe that that was really him. I was like, bro, I promise you that's his Twitter account. <laughs> I was like, his Instagram account is one of my favorites. <laughs> if I could follow five people on Instagram, he would be one of them. Because every post on Instagram or on his stories, I laugh. Because he just, like, he he posted that. The first one I remember after I started following him was, it was like, <laughs> it's on his Instagram. It's like a picture of him guarding Zion. And the caption is hashtag sports. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they mic'd him up, that's really how he talks. It is exactly he's like, how he's he like, talks. He's like, this is a great sports game. Yeah, hey, yeah. great sports game, guys. He's like, Des, you got your shirt on backwards. Turn it around. <laughs> what is and Dez, 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 Dez like, was like, oh, yeah, oh, appreciate, oh, yeah. appreciate, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Man, Jitty. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tyus, though. Tyus is like, Jitty. Yeah, yeah. However, he gets his voice to do that, but gonna he's like Jitty back. Gonna, gonna play, play some sports. <laughs> yeah. he, did, he said one about uh, X when X dunked it. He was like, he did something. He's like, yeah, nice. Thank dunk. you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for dunking that. <laughs> but then the, 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 the but then the other thing. Nice dunk was, shot, X. Yeah, nice dunk you, shot. You hear like the the goofy the goofy stuff, but then there are clips in there where they're playing where you do hear the competitiveness in it. Oh yeah, that is like he's like. Like talking to Des, he's like, "Let's put these dudes away. Let's put them away early. Yeah, let's put away." He's, or he's like, "Let's go!" Like fired. Like you hear it. Jitty yeah. season. You know, last I, night yeah. they had to, they had to try to find a way to get him riled up last night because you know he's so deadpan. Yes. Like John and Des, they were like, "Yo, we had to find a way to like get him like to." They like, can't. He just can't. He's a, it's he was a, like he didn't know he was hitting big shots. He was just out there playing sports. No, he's just playing hashtag sports. No, th- hashtag sports, hashtag fun. Hashtag and fun. And then my, the other thing that was my favorite, I actually talked to Ja about this last year when he was on the show. And I, I, I talked to him about Conchar. And I said, like, when he posts on, like, Instagram, and he'll be he, – he puts up, like – it'll be, like, some – it'll be, like, a picture, like, you know, people put up. Of like the Bahamas, yeah, and it'll be like this, like glowing water and these beautiful beaches and whatever, and it'll be like a picture that like appears to be taken outside of a hotel or whatever, and he'll put like hashtag views, and he's like, but he's he's in his apartment in Memphis, <laughs> nothing is funnier. 
<laughs> he just acts like he's in all these exotic places. <laughs> but he's like sitting in his apartment. Yes, and he's just sitting in Memphis doing it. And I know he's got to think that's the funniest thing yes, ever. Yes. And it throws people off like crazy, probably. He's just sitting in an apartment in Memphis and he's just putting up like a hashtag views and it'll be like some picture. And it'll be like, they'll like have shoot around in the morning and he'll like put like beautiful view or something and it'll be like a picture of like Paris. He'll be like, bro, you're in, you got shoot around in an hour. Why are you acting like you're in Paris? He's the best. It's ridiculous. You go on his Instagram, his second photo is his media day shot. He's like standing with the ball like this. Caption is, B-ball. <laughs> <laughs> his his wrap up of last season, neat year two of hashtag sports. Like he is like I showed you this morning. I posted that thing last night of him and I woke up. He was up early. Old Conchar was. He must be an early riser. Because when I woke up, I checked my Instagram and he had messaged me. Stop. You know what the message was? Fun sports <laughs> exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> Fun sports. Fun sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the best. <laughs> he's the best. And, and it's I so was glad he got all that shine last no, night. Yeah, you know it, what it, I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and that and like for him, it's the, the after the game, it's the part that he like doesn't. He doesn't like. like the he doesn't like talking about no, himself. He no. does not like talking about himself up there. He's like, I, I don't know. Like, I know uh, Drew what Hill. Was, Drew Hill asked him because Darko had talked about. You know who's been inter been the interim coach while Brad Jones is or while uh, Taylor's out about how he committed him on he's getting he's been getting stronger his core's been getting stronger which and asked him if that's helped his rebounding and I was, and I was like bro it, he's been a great rebounder what's yeah. been this what, what what I love about it more is because I've watched the I've watched the guy with the hustle so I watch him come up and he's gotten better and better it's at one been point awesome he led see. the G League in rebound dude he do, he has yes. I always told you that. I'm like dude you look at it and it's like man Contra only scored nine points in the G League but then it's like bro he's rebounds. got eight rebounds and six assists and four steals the only thing different now blocks. is like, he's hitting he, shots now the dude that's the only difference now sixty five percent from ball. three in yeah. the last twenty games that's yeah. not a small sample no. Yeah, he's knocking down shots now. Like, no, he was but, doing all that other stuff before, like the because he was the first player in NCAA history to what to have like a certain amount of points. It's two thousand. Yeah. It's like two thousand points, one thousand rebounds, one thousand assists. Yeah, so he like, been, he been four hundred, five hundred steals. Like he's like, oh. the only player to ever do it, and no one even knew who that was. And no one knew who he was. Like really, it was so off the radar. If you ever watch his games, I, I was telling Kevin, I was like, it's like it was shot in nineteen seventy eight. <laughs> like I don't even know if like there's an HD camera there. Like when you watch his like highlights from, <laughs> yeah, know, it's wild to see it. Um, but anyways, no. What what is what is this this why it also I, th I think I tweeted about it. But why it's also really cool to see is that Ja was drafted, Brandon was drafted, Bain was drafted, Tillman was drafted, Santi was drafted, Zaire was drafted, and it appears they've hit on all of them. Like they all yep. it, it. But Jitty was John was a guy that. Dude, they, he was undrafted, that Brandon Clark Jire, undrafted. They noticed him, wanted him, signed him to a two-way deal. And I've seen the Miami Heat do this with Duncan Robinson. I've seen Duncan Robinson come through. I remember Duncan Robinson when he was a G-leaguer. Yep. Look at the contract he got. I've seen Chris Boucher as a G-leaguer. Mm -hmm. Fred Van Vliet Chris played Boucher. in the G-league for an entire season. Yep. All these guys. And those organizations, Miami and Toronto, develop their G leaguers and turn them. They That's don't a good point. Have, they don't always have to end up yeah. being all stars. Yep. But can you take Siakam some of these, was a G League yep. star? But can you take some of these guys and turn them into rotation guys that can help you win games? And Contra is a guy they've done that with. He That's is not a novelty act. He can play. He can play. He can hoop, bro. He can, he can, he can legitimately play. hoop. He can hoop. You know what I mean? Like, and they, all the guys respect him too. That's the thing. Like, it ain't no like, yo. Like last night, you saw like how much the dudes, like how much the whole. Oh, oh it, went it was awesome. They went crazy. It well, was they so needed awesome. it. Yeah, they, they did, needed it. Him and Brandon were. Yes, that bit. Him and Brandon off the bench. And you know were. what? I give credit to Darko. It ain't easy to, like, close with the lineup you never close with. Right. And he just let that kid ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? And played it out. Um, because that's a feel thing. You know what I mean? That like, is. Uh, you typically would just go back to your starters or. You go back to guys that have been in that situation a lot more often, right? But he rode with him. And after last night, I'm going to update this. My boy Fish had an unbelievable fish nugget last oh, night. Love it. Um, on love me a good nugget. Now, you know, no, listen to this. 
All right. So one of the things that we've talked about is them being able to withstand injury, COVID protocol, everything, right? Like, you see around the league, teams have had all manner of challenges in order to keep on winning, as have the Grizzlies. And yet they've got this 11-game win streak going. And so typically, (coughs) in many cases, what you will find is that at the end of the year, most of the time, there is a great correlation between either teams that overachieved or the best teams and who stayed healthy. You know what I mean? Team health and team games and the amount that you played together in has a massive impact on your team's ability to have success. Last year, unsurprising, I would tell you, I believe Utah going into the playoffs were like the healthiest team. Mm-hmm. They were the ones that they didn't lose minutes of guys for the majority of the season. Certainly not their major guys, right? And if you stay healthy, you got a chance to win. Well, with the Grizzlies, they have, over this 11-game win streak, this was the fish nugget, six different starting lineups, 10 different starters, 22 players have logged minutes, 41 games lost to health and safety protocols, three different head coaches. I mean, that is insanity. Wow. 11 dubs. Wow. They're 11 and 0 in their last 11 games. They have had 10 those first two are outrageous. Yeah. 10 different starting lineups and or I'm sorry, six different starting lineups and 10 different starters. Killian Tilly started. Yeah. Multiple games. Multiple, yeah. Jared Culver has played 30 minutes in a game. But we showed a Killian Tilly on Kevin Durant. (laughs) In a game we won by a lot. And we ended that stretch. We beat the Lakers twice. Lakers Lakers twice, right? Yeah, we beat the Lakers twice. The Lakers. Nets. The Nets. Clippers. Clippers. Warriors. All the top teams that people say are the top teams in the NBA. Made the plays down the stretch. But I was sitting next to Roser. I don't know how you felt. Devin, but as I almost I, knocked him out of the seat when Conchar got that dunk. Oh my God! <laughs> well, I like I, it. <laughs> we, we went buck wild on that. We one. did too. We, it was, I sit next to Ross Wood in our PR. Like, we, were, we know we kind of like kind of have to like comment. Like we can't like be too. I too understand. We're like, <laughs> it was like a yeah. Hey, look, listen to this. I can't tell you how many times I told Roser. I said, "Look, we're making the plays down the stretch. This is great, but like." Thank God they don't realize who their best player is. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was the damnedest thing. Yeah. I texted somebody at halftime and I, or the second quarter, and I said, bro, this dude might for real go for 50 against us tonight. Yes. He had 25 and a half. And he finished with the 28? He finished with a whopping 30. 30. <laughs> There's nobody that can stop him on our team. No, he's too big for all of our wings. And they just started doing the D-Lo cat, maybe swing it out to Malik Beasley or some weird shot from Nas Reed. And I'm like, bro, all y'all would have to do is throw the ball to that dude. What's number one, man? Because he can bang threes. He's devastating off the – he's so strong. I swear to God. I mean, I swear, I swear he is bigger now than the last time we saw them play. Yo, he he is a marvel to watch. He's fun to watch. He is, man. And he's a dog, He's always smiling, too. He's a happy player. He plays happy. We didn't have anything to do with him. Nothing. And they just – Nothing. They – I mean – I mean, it's not like D'Lo and, 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 and Towns played badly. They didn't. But they do this my turn, your turn thing. Yeah. They really devolve they're, they're into for, that. But they're, and they are for real, like, best friends, D'Lo and Cat are. Yeah, no, no, no. But I'm saying with all of them, like, that was like, okay, yeah. Anthony Edwards, you're going off right now. So now it's your, I mean, it's your, your turn to cook. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yo, uh, you might just want to throw it to that guy because we, we – there's no match. In the absence of Dylan, who's only like perimeter guy with like real size, he could just do that three dribbles and he's at the rim, like get off me, little boy. Yeah, stuff. And and he probably and Dylan isn't strong enough to deal with Edwards no, too. But, is, Dil- but Dylan would keep coming at him. He Dylan is would explosive. Stop. He is I man. Mean, my God, he is. The sooner they realize that just build around that dude, dude, and he, like that—that's the dude, like because. Look, 
the same way that like, okay, so Conchar made the plays, and these guys made you know, and, uh, and Brandon made plays, and there's different guys that have come up big on different nights, right? Uh, two nights ago against the Warriors, it was Tyus. Tyus is hitting the dagger. Now it was Conchar hitting the dagger. Make no mistake, that's because they're putting, they're trying to hide guys and play big wings, et cetera, and run two guys at Ja. And Ja makes the right play over and over again. And, but the ball is in his hand. Like, make no mistake, he's going to decide what yeah. is happening in this game. Guys are going to have the opportunities to knock down shots for sure. But, He's going to decide this thing. The ball is in his hands. They don't put they, 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 the ball wasn't even in Edwards' hand. They don't even put the ball in his hands. And there will eventually come a time where, like, when you get into these tight games down the stretch, it's acknowledged he's the dude. He's the dude. Throw yeah. it to him. He's going to decide this. He's their well, they're, star star that can, like, he is a f- Dude, I, I he tell you is. This, he's a force of nature. He is. He is. He is. <laughs> so, we we both. Well, you have a nat- You have more of a. You have obviously have a national platform too. But like, I was the same way because I sat there freaking tenth row against watching him play the Tigers, and I'm like, Meh. I'm like, I mean, he's he's got the fit. You see him, and yeah. you're like, yeah, he's presentable. Like, yeah, that dude's got an NBA body. He's got. Him. You see how he moves. He's got the athleticism. But like, ah. I'm dead wrong about that guy. <laughs> he is awesome. He was unbelievable. Now, th- for th- the other guys, Russell to me is, he starts doing the Curry stuff. He but, is so much he, better against the Grizzlies than he is anybody else. I really he, feel that way. He I sits watch there and does dribble, 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 dribble. Like, he, he does the Curry stuff, but I'm like, bro, you're not Steph Curry. And then Towns, and him and, him and Towns both, dude, they whine, man. They whine all the time. They complain. Yeah. And, like, you saw it down the stretch, Towns, he, he had made some plays, some good plays in that game. And then down the stretch, he doesn't get a couple calls in the final couple minutes, and he just starts complaining about everything. And it's like, yo, dude. The like, other thing is, for the, for the last, it felt to me like the fourth quarter, he, he just turns into Sam Perkins. He's, yeah. He's three-point line to three-point line. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, you can't make him do like he could be. You saw in that first half when he drove on Jaron and, 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 and packed on him. I was like, oh, boy. Bro, there were times he took right? Jaron inside, like, he took Jaron outside. Yeah, and dude, Jaron's playing good defense. He's and got just, all of that in the bag, yeah. and he just you, you got to, like, drag it out of him <laughs> to get him to do it. And that's the difference. Edwards is just do it. They just didn't throw him the ball. <laughs> well, you know what? He got 25. Thanks. He got to chill out. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> relax. Yep. Jerry made history last night, by the way. Oh, he did. He did make history. Uh, you know what history he made? Jerry Jackson Jr. became the first player in Grizzlies franchise history to have three consecutive games of 20 points and five blocks. That's not true. He had, uh, th- he had 13 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks against Golden State. That's not true. I know you got that from Stat Muse. They're wrong. Wait. They got to check their facts. It's fake news? Yeah, it's fake news. Stat, Stat Muse, fake news. Jaron only had three blocks against Golden State. Now, oh. two of those oh, three came in the fourth this. quarter. and he, Yeah, I saw it this morning. Do you correct Stat, him? Stat Muse, not goaded. They're not goaded? Not oh. goaded. Oh, I, I love Stat Muse. I do too, I but you're not goaded. You can't be goaded. No, why not? Well, let's just let them put out fake news. It's good fake news. Yeah, it's good fake news. It bro. is good fake news. Nobody's going to go double check it. What the hell is wrong uh, with Our buddy Keith, Fast Break Breakfast, did. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's all over it. <laughs> he was all did. over it. Well, he's said, him. <laughs> well, I guess he didn't make history. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, close enough. Close enough. Look, close at, enough. look at Jacob. Look at Jacob tweeting to him. Oh, look at our guy. Yeah, I got Jacob calling and he had, Yeah, yeah. And he had six blocks against the Lakers, not five. But the other point that, remains the same, which is <laughs> that he's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, awesome. that's the point. Oh, Jer- Jared's goaded. Yeah. It's just Jared's goaded. Pat Bev, not goaded. Will you stop? Well, yeah, sorry. Why did wh- – where wh- – who said it that t- you – It's ever been since that drive y'all went to Nashville. When you, he was William, William said it. Yeah. William, My yeah. son said it. Yeah. I guarantee you he was around William. William oh, said it a couple times, God. and now he's in San Francisco. Wait till I get William's cell number and we're texting. It's like I got two goated it's about like, who's he's goaded. Not, he's not keeping a pee, bro. I'm it's like you have two kids, except one of us is really? 37. <laughs> it's a tough scene. Just wait till you start saying keep it pee all the time. It's gonna no, be I don't horrible. think I can do oh, that. Oh, no. That, that, that'll be gone in a minute. No, it's, it will yes, not be gone. Yes, it will. No, and then I'll start Nobody using it. And that's when I'll start using it. 
<laughs> like, oh, wait, that one down? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> this dude. <laughs> so, anyways, last night they end up winning that game against Minnesota. They all mob John Conchar after the game. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Yep. I have a question for you. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here's a mob. When we like look at look at this win streak, do you think this is one of the most impressive ones? Because like you know, like so many yes. spots yeah, you, have, man. you have to get up for like the Warriors, you get up for the, the 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 Lakers, you get up for Brooklyn, you get up for the Phoenixes. Like going to the game, you're like, okay, you could probably lose, you could lose this game. I, that's what I, th- I told you. I was more wor- I was more worried about that game than I was it's the a, Warriors game. It's, it's just like, a perfect spot where you could have that let down. This one in Detroit, I feel like are some of the most impressive ones on this, yeah. on this win streak. I'll tell you this though. Oh, I don't know. I, Bro, they did not have it last night. They did not have it. And they it's not won. being a good team, man. Well, they did in the second half. Yeah. They, 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 I thought that's that, a, and that's what I was saying last <laughs> night. Do you know how hard it is? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I, I sent that to him. I was like, look at what Chris is rocking today. It looks like Bane out there. Swag. Jitty Bane. Jitty Bane. Look, <laughs> I, um, I think that it is – very difficult. They didn't play as well as they played in some other games, but they played great in the second half, especially the third quarter. And that's what I would say. They're still not a great shooting team by any means. And yet they are winning all of these games. And it is very, very difficult to repeat performances, you know, 11 times in a row. At some point, you would think you just play like crap. 82 games, and especially over the course, even within the course of 11 games, you have one game, you just, you ain't got it. You you don't play that well, and you get caught, right? Yeah. And the fact that that hasn't happened has now, you know, it's just, it's changed. It's changed any kind of ceiling that you would put, that you would put on what they're capable of once you see this and Mm -hmm. once you see the repeat performances over and over again. Um, Last night when I I saw this, uh, before I went to bed, you were mentioning our buddy Keith from Fast Break. He posted that the Grizzlies have won 11 straight games, and in that streak, they are 29th in three-pointers made, 23rd in three-point percentage, 29th in free throw percentage. So, like, what happens when the shots go in? I mean, it is unbelievable that you could be that lowly ranked in three pointers, field goals, and free throws, yeah. and be on an eleven game win streak. I think it it's, is. it's unfathomable. No, yeah, today's NBA. That that game last yeah. night was one where uh, it, the couple things that I think about is if that game was happened in the first nineteen games of the season, they they probably like they did in Minnesota, they get their ass kicked. But in that second half. That the, dude, they held Minnesota 24 points in the third, 24 points in the fourth. And Dylan Brooks said it a, a few games ago when he was playing it was when they locked down on defense. And he said, we do know. We, we do know now. When you defend every night, you will give yourself a chance. And so there are times they didn't have the shots and the shots weren't falling. But, bro, they guard. And they, they didn't even have they, they haven't had Adams. No. And Adams no. has been like a defensive quarterback for them. And now Jaron at center is devastating. I woke up this morning. I got a text from uh, my boy Jonathan Charks, who – He loved Jaron in the draft. Loved Clark, loved too. Loved Clark, too. But he loved Jaron also. You, you know what he told me? This, uh, here, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what he sent me. Didn't he have Jaron ranked as the second-best player in that draft behind Luka? Uh, yes. Yeah. And he had Clark ranked he had in the top one like, for some amount yeah. of time. He loved him. He, he loved, loved Jaron. Him. Where's the Charks one? Hold on. Uh, I'm loving Jaron at the five with Adams out. Jaron plus Clark at the four or five are plus 20 this season. And they're Net like rating. really good friends. Smoking people. Wow. Smoking on your top so, five I, I to nine. You're smoking on uh, any pack. Smoking on your top five to nine. Five well, pack them. Well, and well, I'm, I'll pack them. I've talked to you about, uh, you know, what uh, – and, you know, yeah, he got injured, and, yeah, he started trying to shoot threes and all that bull crap last year. Like, everybody's been trying to figure out, like, what the hell was that Brandon Clark year? Like, let's just do the men in black zapper thing and just yeah. forget about it. You know what's happened? The more I've thought about it, the more I've thought about it, nothing hurt him worse than Jaron's injury. Jaron wasn't there. 
Now you're in the absence of Jaron, you're trying to make that kid a four. He ain't a four. He's an offensive five. That's what he is. You can't do it if you got playing with Kyle, who was playing power forward last year, or Valentunas. Now you got Valentunas. Now all of a sudden, I need Brandon Clark to be a four. You know, he's basically my backup four because I was starting Kyle Anderson at four last year. Now, when he comes in, especially with the minutes that he can log with Jaron, which is a lot, he can log a lot of minutes with Jaron. Now, on defense, he could go run around, he could switch on stuff, and he could be out on the perimeter guarding fours because he's that level of athlete. Mm-hmm. But on offense, he can play five. Jaron's the one that stretches the floor. They're trying to make Brandon the guy that stretches the floor. Well, that's why it actually becomes this perfect pairing because one of them can play four on offense, five on defense. The other one can play five on defense uh, and four on defense. And him being out, exposed, bro, you're not – like we can't – you try to make him more of a stretch four, right? Like open it up a little bit more. You can't have him and Valanciunas both five feet from the basket – So I need you to be able to, right? And then your confidence gets wrecked and everything like that. Now he's just back to, yo, man, get to your spots and just bomb people out with this floater. Mm -hmm. And he made his free throws. I told Roser last night, I got so scared. That game was in the balance. And he went to the basket, he got fouled. I said, oh, man. So one thing he struggled from is knocking down free throws. And we had had a crappy night for the free throw line anyway. Jaron had missed those two earlier and was upset about them. And, like, I was like, man. And Brandon, he's, that was with the game on the line. He stood at the line. He banged both those down. Yeah, he did. Congrats to him. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That was big time. BC's been playing well, man. Our, uh, he's been outrunning people. Let me see if I can find BC's number. BC's oh, number. him and Conchar off yeah, the they, bench they, last they, night. They, were, they saved flipped it. the game. They, they totally flipped the game last night. Absolutely. Yes. Needed it. it. Yes. Needed it. This month, BC is averaging, this month alone, in the month of January, 14 points, eight rebounds on 68% shooting. That's first year BC all over again. 100%. That's the guy that everybody fell in love with and was like, oh my God, this is one of the big steals of the draft. Yep. That's first. Doing what he's good at. Yep. Rim running, floating. Yes. Dunking. Dunk shots. Dunk shots. Dunk Big dunk shots. shots. Big dunk shots. I'm wearing the Dylan Brooks glasses today, and earlier in the week, as the Grizzlies uh, played that game against the Warriors, our buddy Tim McMahon from ESPN joined us in studio, and I gifted him the glasses. And this morning, he sends along to me, he says, yo, I wore them on the... Brian Windhorse Hoop Collective podcast, and he sends me the link to it, and I pulled it up, and oh my goodness! Wait till you see this. Oh, Turn up. You're not eligible. Okay. Turn up. <laughs> Best young players in the league. We're gonna redraft them here in the little snake draft format. McMahon, what are you wearing? These are my Dylan Brooks shades. These are I just came through Memphis. Our our buddy Chris Vernon gave me these. These are you know Dylan Brooks Erno. is like known for his sunglass collection. So the Grizzlies, who I, I th- the Grizzlies, I think do a great job with promotions. They uh, gave these away. What? Ma- what's that what does it say on the side? Grizz Next Gen. Oh, you know, kind of like their their thing. And so yeah, uh-huh. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That. Yeah, like, he yeah. wore them on the podcast. So I love how everybody's like around like the NBA, like whether it's Twitter, whether it's TV. They're like getting hip to like what the Grizz, what we are. Yep. And there's like the Grizz next gen. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Or yeah. Like just, just other stuff. To, just give it the X. Like what? some stuff that like people starting like starting like figure out with like John Contra last night. That's right. Like everybody starting to get well, hip to and, uh, our, our buddy Chris Harrington was on with Zach Lowe's podcast. I started it's a whole. It. It's a Grizzlies love fest. Let's go. Oh no, and yeah. that's that is one of those because Zach Lowe is 100 percent the person that started it. And it picked up steam. Was getting Mark Gasol Defensive Player of the Year There's that no year. No question. It, we can get freaking Jaron on one of these all defensive teams. Let's get him on. He it. Might be able to do a it. A defensive force. Absolutely. Might be able to do it. Yeah. Get Absolutely. Jaren, it's, it's, Jaren at least yeah, on second you know team what? all defense. It's funny you mentioned because I said this to uh, Brevin brought it up in the post game show about all defense and um, you know the impact is anybody with eyeballs could see. Um, 
especially when he's been playing center, it's just been even more devastating and more noticeable uh, how amazing he is at guarding the rim. And the other end, he can knock down threes and do everything. I mean, he is just really coming into his own, especially on that end of the court. But he uh, – Brevin was talking about the all defense thing, and, you know, I said, you know, one of the things – and I, I get credit with credit. Uh, Cal Perry used to talk about this all the time. Um, uh, which is one of the things that you're attempting to teach teams, it's very difficult, is that when you play as a team and when you win because you are all for one, one for all, everybody's pulling the same rope, all those accolades, all that draft stock, all that, all those things that you want, it will all come. But it won't in the same way if you are not winning and you're out there to get your own and you're worried about your stats more than team success. And there is no better example of that than this because you see guys like Conchar getting shine. You see... Jared hasn't had the best season. You see him now getting talked up on uh, defensive. You know, they're talking about Tyus Jones being one of the best backup point guards in the league. Yep. They're talking about John Morant starting the All Star game and being All NBA. They're talking about Desmond Bain winning Most Improved Player. They're talking about the job Taylor Jenkins is like it's on and on and on. And it's nothing is more true than if you win, everybody's gonna get their shine. You know what I mean? Now, all of a sudden, people are looking at you and your team much, much differently, and your stats aren't nearly as big a deal as the fact that you were a part of winning. Like, you would see all kinds of guys. You remember those, like, Carolina guys, like Brandon Wright or Ed Davis or whoever? They get drafted in the lottery. They were, like, six men that didn't even play all that much. Guess who else? Jared Jackson Jr. He didn't have some kind of crazy rookie uh, freshman year at Michigan State. He's good. Go look at his stats. They're not eye-popping. He had foul trouble. He, You know, there were certainly glimpses of him doing amazing things. Yeah. But he's part of winning. He's part of a really good team. Like those Deron Lamb teams, those Kentucky teams. Yes. Like the Jeremy Lamb teams, all those. These guys get drafted. They get drafted just because they're on the winning teams. Oh, Daniel Orton. Daniel, and even yeah, even the periphery dudes. guys. Yeah, they get You good. know what I mean? Because they're part of winning. They were part of something special. And that their stats weren't nearly as important as that whole Villanova thing, right? Yeah. Like you saw DiVincenzo, he, he's not even considered a first-round draft pick. Next thing you know, they have that run. He goes off a couple Most times. Most outstanding player in the final four. Yeah, yeah, next thing you know, he's like a top 20 pick. Yep. Um, Tyus Jones, for that matter. I mean, you got a lot of guys that were like, you know, part of winning. And you, you start to get the attention um, because now people are paying mind to you. And all of a sudden, it's like, and this guy's doing great. And look at what this guy brings to the table. And, look, and then, like you said, it's a different guy every night. Conchar, it was last night. Two nights ago, it was Tyus Jones. Tonight, it might be somebody different. Yeah. You know, where it it's might like be Dakota stand Tyus. Out. Huh? It might be Dakota, Dakota Matthias. We just signed him to a 10 day Is that right? COVID 19 exception. Oh. Look at that. Let's go, Dakota. Look at that. He saw John Conchar last night. He was like, you know what? I, I got this. this. I got this. I got this. Well, you know, I mean, and then even guys that like struggle and don't have as good a night, it's like you don't even remember them. They're not, they're not spotlighted, right? Like, guess what? John was like five for, what, 16 last night or something? Yep. I mean, and he was clearly hobbling. Yeah, because he took yeah. seven threes, and that ain't something he He's does. He's over seven, five, 16, 16 points, eight, ass- eight rebounds, not a Yeah, he still almost had a triple double. Almost had a triple double. And, it's one, of his, and it's, one of his, it's one of his poor field goal percentage teams. Melton hasn't made a shot since he come back, practically. Boy, like, he is, since he came back off the protocols, it's been a real struggle, but it's, it's not a big deal. deal. No, it's yeah. not. He'll, it'll be, you'll get a lot of regression to the mean. He'll hit. You know what I mean? He's going to have one of these nights where he hits a bunch. Yep, tonight might be the night. Right? 
And you have the opportunity uh, because everybody is contributing. I, they're, I mean, they're top to bottom. They're loaded, man. They are loaded. Yeah, you see the, and they uh, got just a good vibe about them. They do. Somebody, uh, what's his name? He drops out an efficiency uh, chart every week. I think where is it? Oh, yeah, uh, Goldsberry. Yeah, Goldsberry. Kurt Goldsberry. Yeah, he, he drops yep. an efficiency chart every week. And this week, Memphis is, I think, their number one in offense, number three in defense. Jeez. I think that's I think that's what uh the net the number two total net rate. Dude, number one in offense and like I think that's what it said is during the winter. Said we we right? haven't even sure. played that well on offense. Like we're, we're, we don't make shots. Yeah, we what don't is make is shots. So, what, what we do is we get a million possessions. There it goes. Number yes. four in offense, number two in offensive defense, rebounds, so, yeah. and we turn you over. Yeah, blocks and steals. Yeah. That's old school Grizzlies. It yeah. is. It really is. It's like a remix. It's a different way. Yeah. yeah. But that's how you did it. You, we don't have to shoot better than you when we shoot more than you. <laughs> right? That's the thing. Yeah. Because at the end of the game, you got 87 field goal attempts, and we got 102. So we don't have to hit as many as you do. <laughs> right? Yep. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That's the way it goes. That's crazy, man. Number one in net rating, five on offense, number two in defense. Golly. It's like a G&G remix. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now we dunk more, too. We do, we dunk a lot. The more. craziest thing too, <laughs> we have is guys like, who can dunk. Yeah. <laughs> is like in this it, you will never uh, you guys will remember this. So, one of the hallmarks of the 7 years in a row of making the playoffs was that we come into the year and the Vegas win total was low and the predictions were always low. And people just, you know, never ranked you. you know, they, 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 whoever the new thing, whoever got some off-season stuff done and whatever, they, you know, they move ahead of you. And it was like, yeah, yeah, that was cute last year with their 50 wins. But now, you know, they'd have them eighth or they'd have them, you know, ninth mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, just every year. Like, it was like, bro, why does nobody ever think they're good? And they were just criminally underrated every year. Just getting no shine, right? And this year, we came in here, and you could probably find the old show, and I said, we are in the weirdest position. It is the first year, and I think it's because of what happened in the Utah series, you know, knocking out Golden State, Mm -hmm. Ja doing the thing. It's like, we and no one else was sitting there going, Bro, this national media is some friggin' haters, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they don't. Why don't they? Why don't they recognize? Like, they were they were too low on the Grizzlies last year, and they outperformed everything. And now you come back this year, and you're expecting like, ah, oh, they're gonna be low on them again. But they had them right in the range that everybody did. They were like pretty much the consensus eight or nine. Everybody had them in the same way. So did we. We were like, bro, look. There's six that, like, you can't expect them to be in that, right? Yeah. With, like, on the trajectory of where you're supposed to be. You know, you can't expect them because you got a bunch of these teams that are, they're more trying to win right now. The, the Grizzlies never made any, they, they, yes, they're going to try to win as many games as they can right now. But we still didn't know, like, it's going to be Jaron back in the fold for the first time. Now you got rid of Valanchunas and you're bringing in Adams. You've made some changes. You're bringing in a new draft pick. It's like, who knows the way this stuff's going to go. And you figure it will be between 7 and 10. Yeah. You know, hopefully, that's to me, that's what I kept saying. Just be 7 or 8, man. That way you just got to win one game, and then you're in the playoffs again. You don't want to take a step backwards. But there was that big... There was a big topic when they made that deal for the Adam Zaire thing was they got worse. How are people going to handle that they got worse? That was a thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, you know, we were saying, like, yo, you don't want to take a step back. People are on fire for you right now. Last year was kind of a man year until the end of the season. But then you, 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 you got everybody's attention. Yeah. And that FedEx form was lit in the playoffs against Utah. And it was just a dream to even be there. Like, dude, we didn't expect this. And so this year it was like, hey, man, just be in the playoffs. Because 
you're still a couple years out. Your best players are less than 23 years old. You know, you're not – this isn't championship time right now. And I'll be damned, they were underrated again. Yeah. There's going to come a day where they're properly rated. But I said they were properly rated this year. It'll, it'll be prop- they weren't. We'll be properly yeah. rated when we're the title favorites. Yeah, let's go, Roser. Do you That's know if I would have said? Rated. You know if I would have said that they, they it could be the fourth best team in the West. Uh, we're the third best team in the West. Third best team. <laughs> what, you said two, that is insane, two bro. Back, two back of what? Three back of two? Two or three back of two? Two and a half? Yeah, something like that. It's insane. In year three? Well, they don't have they don't have uh, what's the name? Draymond still. And Clay's only playing like twenty minutes. Yeah, they got whopped by. Uh, Man, they got whopped. Last night. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Were like that. Hey, well, well, look, we got MLK Day coming up uh, on Monday. One of the honorees is our guy Muggsy Bogues. Oh. Yeah, he's gonna be here. We're gonna catch up with him. I hope on the other side, of Chris Vernon's show. Something we've been wishing for, obviously, Miss fans for most of this past season and. Now being able to have in the arena to you know, be able to cheer us on for us to you know feed off the energy, it's feel like it's, it's big time for us. Grant makes his move, spins in the paint, turns, puts it up, puts it in. John Morant. Everything I do when I step out on the floor, not only repping you know me, my family, and I'm also repping Memphis as a whole. And like I said, I wear it with pride, and you know everything I do is you know for Memphis. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is the spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Roser, what'd you learn this week? I've never come in here and just been, like, disappointed in Alabama. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. LSU sucks. And they just let them push them around. Like, if, if LSU had a competent quarterback, they win the game. Yeah, That's yeah. embarrassing for Alabama. Right. Have some pride. CJ, what'd you learn this the week? Embarrassing Big Al. <laughs> It's an elephant with pride. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, The Odds Couple. Fridays on GrindCityMedia.com and YouTube. The Grizzlies and Orion Federal Credit Union have partnered to help lucky fans score home loan help and Grizzlies swag when you enter to win. Prizes include two floor seat tickets to a Grizzlies game, special autograph merch, Grizzlies swag bags, and a special welcome committee greeting from Grizz and the Claw Crew. Visit Grizzlies.com slash Orion Home Loan for official rules. No purchase necessary. Equal housing lender. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies Bumble app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience. Keep track of a team with news, social media, and team information. Plus, you can log into Grind City Media for articles, videos, podcasts, and streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can see what's going on at FedEx Forum and use the app as your ticket and mobile wallet for contact-free payment in the arena. The official Grizzlies Mobile app, your key to the game. Game before that was 32 21. I did write it on my CJ. hand. Look at CJ. Yeah. wrote it on my hand. 40 to 28. How do I not say anything about that? I can't just talk to you and, like, did you write that on your hand? Are we done writing things on our hands? At this point, this is always here. Yeah. And there's this amazing thing called a notes app. <laughs> Let me check my palm pilot. Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Live daily at 8 a.m. on grindcitymedia.com. What's up, y'all? This is Chase Rice hanging outdoors with an ice-cold Mountain Dew. You know, it's easy to tell who really loves the outdoors. One thing, there's a rack on your car and a hitch on the back of your truck. There's a garage full of toys from wakeboards to dirt bikes. And there's a cooler full of Mountain Dew, always at the ready. Because when it's time to get out and do, you know, hit the lake or the deer stand, a cooler of Mountain Dew, that's as important a piece of outdoor gear as your four-wheeler or your fishing rod. Mountain Dew. Do the do. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. 
fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the Burrito Supreme combo from your local Taco Bell through January 23rd, you'll score a key tag good for a free Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Key tag available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by WinBet. Now, back to your host, Chris think Vernon. You think you know what's going on. You think you got it made. Your love's on fire, but he's a liar. I think you just got played. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon Show. Uh, we're going to try to catch up with Muggsy Bogues, of course. I met Muggsy Bogues when we were in uh, the, at the All-Star Game in Charlotte. Yeah, he beat me in a uh, the shooting contest. Yeah, in like a virtual shooting contest. Super yeah. cool dude. Yeah. Super cool dude, Muggsy Bogues. I actually got William a Muggsy Bogues jersey that he signed for me. Remember oh, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We still got that. Yeah, remember that? Because I almost bought a uh, – Devin's wearing a little Mitchell and Ness. I almost bought a Mitchell and Ness Rodman jersey. <laughs> I remember that. It would be yeah, on sale. Muggsy oh, Bogues, did. of course, shortest player to ever play in the NBA. He will forever be a recognizable name. Absolutely. within. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you have these – you have these people throughout NBA history um, that are incredibly recognizable. He is one of those. The other ones were, uh, and they have, uh, have they sent it out yet? Elvin Hayes, I believe, is one of them. Alan Houston uh, mm-hmm. is going to be here. Um, who's the other one? Let's see. Uh, yeah. Alan Elvin, Houston, Hayes, Al- Elvin Hayes, Alan Houston, Muggsy Bogues. Okay. Uh, I, Alan Houston, obviously, a former Tennessee volunteer um, and a longtime player. In the NBA, and Elvin Hayes, uh, one of the greats. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, we've talked about this before, Dev, but nothing in my estimation, nothing has been better for the history of basketball than 2K. Yes. I, I actually was talking to Bill Simmons about this recently because his son – is now a teenager, but the awareness of the older generation of players is greater now than it has ever been in history. Truly. Like, because they have all those all-time teams, they have all those, like, my teams with the packs and everything. Uh, William knows more about historical NBA players, teams, like the the awareness of it also I I'll, I'll tell you this also awareness of the league as a whole. Yeah. You know what I mean? The same way it's odd, same it's the same exact thing in the NFL. We'll be watching games and he has an awareness of guys that I don't. And I'm like, "How did you even know who that was?" There'll be some random guy that catches a touchdown. And I promise you, you've never heard of him. And I'll be like, "Who is that?" Like, I don't even, like, nobody even has him in fantasy. Like, you know, like, who is it? And he's like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. It's a, it, I'm like, how did you know that? He's like, Madden. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> I played like, oh. with the, you know, he'll be like, I played with the Panthers last week. Be like, what? Yeah. It's like when, like, when we do NFL notes, when I, like, mention, like, Algie Crumpler in there. Yeah. That's how I know from playing Madden. Video like, games. the same way. Yeah. It's the same way. Well, now, and the man. NBA has, I think, benef- benefited from that greatly, you know, especially because guess what? My son, if I tell him that they're going to be honoring Elvin Hayes, they know ex- he knows exactly who that is. He's, mm-hmm. he's 12 years old. Yeah. He knows who Muggsy Bogues is. He was so excited to get that jersey. He knows who Allen Houston is. Like, he knows all these guys. And it's because of 2K. You know and Space mean? Jam. Space Jam. Muggsy Bogues is in Space Jam. Wasn't True. he? Was he in the original one? Yeah, he's in the OG one. Yeah, he's in there. Yeah, he's he, was, in there. he was in the original yeah, one. He's he in the his, original. He got his talent stolen away <laughs> by the Monstars. He did. Very unfortunate for Muggsy. <laughs> I was so happy for him when he got it back. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm glad he got it back. That would have been a tough, a tough scene. <laughs> it would have been, been tough. But the MLK game is always uh, unbelievable. Do you know if they're going to be able to have, like, entertainment? Are uh, they going to be able to have, like, a special anthem or a halftime, a halftime in the time, same like, way that, you know, because they have had, obviously, some unbelievable ones in the past. Um, maybe the most, like, shocked, and like, oh my God, that was absolutely unbelievable that I've been was the year that they brought in Aaron Neville. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, much. that's what I thought of. Bro, he was amazing. Really? Yes. He sang like a change is gonna come by Sam Cooke, and I'm, he was unbelievable. I'm like, Yo, Aaron Neville is amazing. Leon Bridges, my guy, he came yeah. one year. Anthony Hamilton did and did halftime. Right? Anthony Hamilton. Anthony Hamilton, yeah. yeah. Dude, what, are you, what are you acting like you didn't know? You went out with his band. I did. You remember that? that? Yeah. I did do that afterwards. You called that us and time. you were like, yeah, well, yeah. with Anthony <laughs> They're Hamilton. They're in my house. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, <laughs> They're Robert, my apartment, man. Robert Randolph that was, was fun. also. One time. Anthony Hamilton's band. Just kicking out of my apartment, man. He's coming on that thing, isn't he? Yeah, he's coming. The Maxwell, the Maxwell show. Thing, yeah. Oh, he I is. saw the promo the other night. I yeah. was like, yo, Anthony Hamilton's going to be there. I wonder if he has the and same Joe. band. Joe. Joe's going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be a great show. My mom wants to go so bad. She wants to see Maxwell. A lot of shea butter. You should have. You shea butter incense. You should have. <laughs> <laughs> shea butter incense show. <laughs> Yo, you should have said you should have told her you're taking the Maxwell show when Killy and Tilly was here. <laughs> oh. oh God! She'd be like, "Yo, Killy and Tilly," or she'd be like, "Yo, Maxwell turns the ball over." Yeah, she'd be so confused. <laughs> My mom. My mom. He did, not that dude attention. looked exactly like Maxwell. He did. It was hilarious. Exactly. Like they put that promo up on the screen. They're like, "Coming in concert, Maxwell." And then you look down at the court and you're like, "Whoa, oh, wait. dude." <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. I don't understand it. Um, we do have that coming up on Monday, which is the MLK celebration. Um, before we get to that, we have the NFL playoffs this weekend. We do. Oh, and, yeah. And, and look who ain't wearing 49er gear today. You're not wearing Cowboys gear today. That's what you think. Act like I don't have my Cowboy thong on. <laughs> Put respect it? on you it. Want you, it? Wanna, you want to see the Cowboy thong? Let me see you. Let me see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't know nothing about my cowboy thong. I, I, I can't wear my, my 49ers. I don't wear underwear, so. Ah! Oh, whoa. <laughs> Free ball roser. You don't have to. Peas on his nuts. <laughs> what? That's tough. Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> Look, that's tough. That's, tough. that's, t- that's P. That's P. <laughs> that's P. That's P. Literally. Literally. That's P. That's P. Literally. <laughs> the show's getting a little OD. Literally. Oh, my God. Hey, look. How scared are you? I'm I'm, uh, I'm fine. I, Scale of 1 to 10. Yeah. I think the Cowboys are going to win like 31 to 13, so I'm okay. I like that. I'm oh, okay. okay. I like that prediction. I, for real, I don't think we're going to win. I think Dallas is going to win by double digits. Hey, I, like hey, that I think it's gross on you if you can't beat us. Y'all should beat us easy. I'm, I'm I like that, that prediction. Don't put that. that Don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Yeah, because then if Don't put that evil yeah. on me, Ricky Bobby. That's probably what he's trying to do, putting bad mojo on y'all. And then yes. when, he, when he wins, he's going to be like, that, Rah! Hey. I know him. <laughs> I know him. Don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. He's I, like, oh, it would be a disgrace if no, you guys it's, didn't it's, beat us. No, it's no. We're not I, any good. I th- no, I think the matchup issue for us is, like, it, it comes down to turning it over. Like, if we turn the ball over, we're not going to win. And you guys force multiple. If we, when we – Bill Bardwell had the sad. It's like when we turn it over multiple, like, twice, at least twice, we're, like, 0-7 or something – and you guys forced two two or more turnovers in twelve of your seventeen games. So William, William, William told me uh, yesterday, as we were watching, uh, we had ESPN on in the house, and they were analyzing the games coming up this weekend, and they were talking about the Cowboys game, and they put up a stat, and said the Cowboys are eleven and zero when they have a hundred yards rushing. And William's like, well, then why don't we just rush for a hundred yards every game? And I'm like, you know, I agree. <laughs> it appears as if <laughs> that is the key to success. Yeah. <laughs> if they have 100 yards rushing, they're 11 and 0. That's a big key for so, us too. so far big this year, right? Um, that's what I'm, I'm worried about. The Cowboys are not that great of a run defense. I think it's. And, I like, think we're, we're both... at, we are an attacking. Throw Jimmy G to the ground. Micah Parsons knocking somebody's head off. 
and you get there so fast, the quarterback gets rid of it, pick. That's how it happens. It, that Trust uh, me, that can happen. No, but that is how it happens, right? But in terms of – yeah, I could see Kyle Shanahan doing the just lining it up and, like, Jimmy Garoppolo throws the ball six times. Yep. Yeah. And two yards per kick. That's per what play. I'm worried about. I'm worried about that game plan, which is the game plan that – Take the ball ass, out of your offensive Stupid ass C.J. Anderson got us beat. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, we, yeah, like once upon a time, it was Jared Goff, bro. It was Jared Goff. I'm like, we ain't losing to Jared Goff. Same way I sit there and think to you. I go, yeah, we ain't losing to Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. But then Sean McVay's like, you know what? You're right. You aren't going to lose to Jared Goff. I'm just going to run it down your friggin' throat. Yeah. Same way I think Shanahan would probably do. He'd be like, you know what? We ain't putting the game in this dude's hands. Uh, no, especially if he's got a busted up hand. I mean, how many times can you shoot it up? No, it's 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 Shanahan says it all the time. Thirty rushes is the goal. You got to get to thirty. If we get to thirty, we got a chance that. to win. I worry. And and you're trying to set me up. You see, I'm trying. He's to setting, set you me. I'm I'm not, setting you up. I'm not setting you up. I'm not setting you up. I do, I it's, do, it's like a three point line, bro. I, and I think it should be six or seven. Bet on the Cowboys then. I don't. I don't, I don't really gamble yes, anymore. Yes, you do. You yeah, ask Cap. Cap, Cap, John Cap, John Cap at it again. You John do gamble. Cap. You, you, you I, don't don't, really, I don't really gamble. I don't. I just, I just, I'm just on the odds couple of giving out gambling picks. Oh, by the way, I, <laughs> I did tell Fish yesterday. I said, dude, none of these picks happen. None of these count. None of our picks count from because I hate every line this week. The only line I like this week is pay, is Bills minus four. It's the only one I'd like. I think I'm gonna take the over in Bengals Raiders. I feel like that's going to be a shootout. Yeah, what's the what's the Could 48? Be. Like 48, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to take the over in that thing. Yeah. And then the yeah, I don't really like again, some of these are like, you know, rematches. Right? Yeah. Bills Pats, I got no idea. Yeah. I got no idea what's going to happen. I might go see Michael Williams this weekend. Oh yeah, Mikey Williams, who's like one of the best preps players in America, right? Yeah, he'll be He's going to be here. Week. Where's he playing? Oh, it's Look, Muggsy. Oh, it's Muggsy Bob. Yeah, it's Muggsy. <laughs> Muggsy Bob. I was just listening to you. Mikey Williams. Have you ever seen Mikey Williams? You know who that is? He's like one of the best prep stars. This guy, kid's got like 3.5 million Instagram followers, and he's a high school basketball player. Crazy. Really? Yeah, man. You've got it. You know what? You, you're, I was reading the other day. You've got a grandson that's a baller, huh? I do have a grandson that's a baller, correct. Where's he going? Is he still, he's, he, uh, he's, in, he's in Maryland at Cabo Hall High School. Yeah. Has he already? Yes. He's already been recruited. He's been recruited. He's yeah. been recruited. Any idea where he's going to go? No idea. You, you know, know. It's, just probably, it's, still, it's still early. You know, he's only in eleventh grade. Is he better than Grandpa? Uh, I tell you, his shot is better than Grandpa. Oh yeah. Yeah. At this stage, uh, it's at his career and where I was back at my time and doing that eleventh grade, his jump shot is much better than mine. Can you still get out there? When's the last time you shot a basketball? I shot a basketball probably about last week. Oh, last week. Nope. Do you still play? The basketball for... and up down the court is two different things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still play for fun? No, absolutely not. No, none. Yeah. You... you know, just, just you know, in the backyard, in the back, you know, when my son and I and his friends come over, we may get out there and play a little horse or out game. That's about it. That's about it? But you don't... Yeah, you you have no interest in what takes up your days now. Well, besides my foundation and being an ambassador for the uh, Haunt Charlotte Hornets as well as the NBA, and all my personal endeavors that I'm you know, involved with, I got a book that's uh, coming out. Uh, just you know, trying to just do some things in the community, you know, uplift these kids as well as the uh, the adults. So just trying to live my time in a, in a more positive way. You stay busy. Um... How excited were you when you heard that you were going to be one of the recipients of the uh, Civil Rights Award that they're giving out for this Martin Luther King Day game on Monday? Uh, I was so honored. Uh, so honored and be blessed to be uh, be mentioned in the likes of uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and the work that he's done. I mean, just being able to do my part, and that's what, he, that's what it all stands from, stems from, you know, his willingness to speak for the less less voiceless and be able to be out there and represent. So for me to be able to, to accept an award or this honor, I'm just so grateful. When you when you get done with your career, do you think to yourself, I don't know what I'm gonna do right now, now that basketball's over, or did you have a plan 
already set in place like, okay, once this is over, here's what I'm going to get into next? Well, I had, I was, you know, during my transition, I started to, start to plan what I wanted to do. You know, I was got myself into real estate. And, um, and before I retired, you know, I was kind of doing a lot of deals uh, in real estate before retirement. So I kind of made that transition. It was an easy transition for me, along with some other things that I had going in terms of camps and speaking engagements. Uh, so it, it was not a very difficult time for me in terms of the transition because that was something that I was planning on doing and I, and I did it as long as, you know, I felt, you know, I, I, I need to continue to, I know I had until 2008, 2007, eight hit, you know, the, the market kind of crashed a little bit. It made you change. So no, was it called Muggsy Bogues Real Estate? Uh, it was called Crossover. And then my partner. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so part of the reason that you are uh, going to be one of the award recipients of the Sports Legacy Award from the National Civil Rights Museum uh, coming up on Monday is because of the Muggsy Bogues Family Foundation. Tell me what the Muggsy Bogues Family Foundation is. Well, as I mentioned to Laura uh, earlier, our vision is to empower at-risk youth and families and try to, you know, addressing food insecurities in our community by addressing um, you know, by uh, addressing education, job training, and, and, and to make sure that these kids and these families have an opportunity to reach their full potential. Um, we have partnered with a trade school here where we award scholarships, four scholarships per year to these students to make sure that they have an opportunity to, to reach their full potential. We have uh, food drives uh, where we feed the community. We have three, we call it Label of Love. We have a Label of Love on Labor Day, one on Thanksgiving as well as Christmas, where we're able to feed, you know, uh, 300 or so families on each occasion. And it's such a blessing to be able to, to provide for those families during those times because, you know, no one should have to make a, a decision to put gas in their car or have food on the table. So I'm just so thankful for all the partners that became involved in our foundations, the the CPI, the, the Healthy Blues of North Carolina, Lowe's, um, Food. Uh, loves and fishers as well as um, goodwill and, and food lines. So I just want to give all of them a shout out because they have been so supportive. Mr. George Shen behind the scenes been very instrumental in financing our program. So I'm so thankful for all those supporters. Why was this important to you? Because I mean, where I grew up, you know, coming from the inner city of Baltimore, and not uh, being less fortunate, I always felt like, and it took a village to raise us. And I felt, you know, if I was in a position, you know, you want to make sure that you give back, especially during the times. Uh, where people really need that help, the helping hand. And I'm just so grateful and thankful that I'm in a position that I can be able to do so. Five foot three, how did you make it? How did you, <laughs> ma- how did you make it to the NBA? Well, it's believing. Believing in yourself, uh, understanding what your limits and your strengths and weaknesses is, and knowing the craft and knowing the job at hand. And for my position was a point guard, knowing how to run a team, knowing how to make guys around you better, uh, being an extension of that coach, and having that understanding to be able to cause havoc for your defender, uh, knowing what it takes in order for them to get into the offense, which is the point guard, to get across half court and start it as quick as he can. So if you can disrupt all of that and have an impact on the game in that regards, then now you're starting to impact the game. And I've become where a coach can now look at you as not as a liability but more so as an asset and at my size you know and during that era you know everything was more or less about big guards big guards so i had to change that perception and the only way of changing the perception is being able to have that impact on the on the on the, uh, on the court on both ends of the floor so I, I had this I had this uh, T-shirt back in the day, Muggsy Bugs basketball camp. On the back it said, "Never too small to ball," right? <laughs> and yep. you were like, you were like this, you were forever, and you still are, oddly, this inspiration to any kid that wasn't blessed with great genetics, right? And 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 is small growing up, and yet you'd think that there would be more guys under six foot that have made it. And yet, why do you think that it has been so difficult? Uh, Because, look, there's millions and millions of kids and mega-talented kids that play basketball. You would figure that there would be some, uh, you know, growing up, you were there, then Earl Boykins was there for a while. Um, 
but there really haven't been. I mean, it's really here and there, and the fact that you get to still stand tall as the shortest guy to ever play is pretty wild to me. Well, it's all how you impact the game. And, of course, now the game has changed. Yeah. And for me, uh, during that era, um, it was about the big man. Yeah. And you know, it was inside play a lot. And I think a lot of small guards necessarily truly don't understand how to continue to shine. Uh, we all can score the basketball. And, I mean, if I wanted to shoot and score, I could have done that. But I knew – in order to be recognized, in order to be taken seriously as for a coach, I should say, in each level, that you got to be able to impact that game, especially at that position on both ends of the floor, and you got to be that floor leader. Mm -hmm. And for me, I understood that, and I understood that I had to more or less focus so much on how to play the game as opposed to just going out there, you know, worrying about my individual stats, getting 25 or 30 points, putting up a lot of shots. But you got to be looked upon as a leader, as the extension, as a coach, as I mentioned, to be looked at and be looked at as that guy that can run your program. And for me, I wanted to be on the floor. I wanted to be a starter. I didn't want to be the guy that coming off the bench. So that was something that I understood early on, and I think that was allowed me to, you know, to persevere through all the things I had to, you know, endure. Well, I think it's still to this day, there's probably so many kids that see you and, you know, they go back and they see the clips. Or I mentioned earlier, nothing is done more for a kid's awareness of the older generation of players than 2K, right? But you, like, serve as an inspiration to these kids coming up, right? And I think it, your, your message is a good one, right? It's about trying to – they all think that they're going to be Steph Curry. Right, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you, I, I know you know Dell very well, and you're there. With, you know you're there with the Hornets. They all think they're going to be Stephs, and then you. Sh I, I, we talk about this all the time. You show up to the game. Steph Curry is tall. <laughs> Steph Curry is not little. Right? Everybody thinks he's little. He's like six four, and you stand <laughs> next to him, and you're like, hold on now, this ain't little Steph Curry knocking down shots. Like this dude, any. If he walks into any restaurant, he's the tallest guy in the restaurant. I promise you, right? But yeah, yeah. I think there's that feeling that you need to be, you know, the guy putting the ball in the basket rather than the guy affecting the game in all different ways and making everybody else better. Well, you know, people look at Steph as small. That's just like they looked at Tiny Archibald and they yep. thought that he was small. You know, Tiny was six one. So, uh, <laughs> so these. And it goes back to, again, you know, how you affect and how you play the game. It's like Trey Young. Trey Young is, is – they look at him as small, but Trey is right around 5'11". Um, and so, so you you know, these guys – and you mentioned Earl Borkin. Earl was pretty much close to my size. He was 5'5". Five, five. So he had he had that understanding how to, to be effective. And it took him quite a bit in order for – and as the game was starting to change, for him to be looked upon as, you know, some really – someone who's really serious who can impact the game on the offensive end because Earl was a scorer he was able to impact the game in that in that regards and as opposed to me you know I was that all-around type of player where you know I was pass first shoot second and, and that allowed me to be you know that type of uh throwback as you would say now that type of point guard but we've it's, got it's we've got part. one here our backup point guard Tyus Jones in Memphis yes he, play, yeah, he plays like that, that. yep that's exactly right. And I had a conversation. And I love Tyus Jones. And that's something that he continued. I love the way he continued to keep his confidence, you know, because a lot of folks was ruling him out um, because when he came out of Duke, not being able to, you know, step in right away. But he's impacted the game in, in, in many ways. And having John, uh, John Marat in, in front of him to really just go out there and be that cha that uh, pace changer, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great. It's a great fit for the organization. And I'm just so happy for the franchise because it's a small market like Charlotte, and yep. they got to understand where they are, and they're giving the fans everything they have, and I'm loving what they're doing and how and the winning streak they're on. I hope it continues. With your role with Charlotte, tell me about the Hornets this year and Muggsy Bogues' take. Well, I'm, I serve as an ambassador, and I love the, the excitement of the, the Hornets. The future is bright with Melo, Miles Davis, uh, P.J. Uh, Washington, as well as with the veterans and, and Gordon Haywood, 
and Terry Rozier. I think that blend has really allowed these guys to become their own, step into their own shadow, uh, and not only uh, and play together. I think they're missing a, a guy in the middle right now. I think that's a missing piece for them. Somebody can protect the rim. But they're playing great basketball. They're sharing the basketball. I like what Coach JB is doing with the guys. Um, you got, um, I think, uh, uh, the kid uh, Oubre is playing his best basketball that he ever been in the NBA. So that's been really uh, exciting to see. So the Hornets, you know, they a team to be reckoned with. Yeah. You love LaMelo? I love LaMelo. Him and Ja Moran are my two excited, most young, excited players right now. And I think the, the, the path that they're on right now is scary. And I think those two really had a high, they got a high ceiling. And I'm looking forward to seeing the end result of it. I can only imagine that Charlotte's probably exactly like Memphis, where you look around the stands and everybody's got LaMelo jerseys. Every little kid in that city, right? I mean, when these young guys come in and they're that great, they really just take the cities by storm. But what you also love about how they buy into the city, yep. you know, how they really understand where they are. It's not a big market like the L.A.'s and the New York, but they understand where they are and they give the fans that type of feeling that they're going to be here a long time and they're winning and they're out there playing for them. And that's very rewarding. Let me ask you about one question about your playing days. I've always wondered, who was the meanest to you? Who trash-talked you the most for be, for being little? Who was the one that, like, you knew that when you're playing them tonight, this guy is, like, he's not going to let up? No, I, I didn't have nobody in that. Nobody that, was ever – no nobody was ever trash-talking you throughout the games? No, I mean, you have trash talk, but you didn't have nobody that's ongoing that type. You know, Gary Payton liked to talk, yeah. you know, because that, that was our position. Uh, but no one really came. You know, Michael liked to talk uh, mm. you know, at the times uh, because when we play him, I and that was just the relationship we have, you always call me that little fella. But, uh, <laughs> other than, yeah, other than that, I mean, it wasn't no. You get a of lot of you get a lot of the post him up, post him up, right? Well, not really, because posting me up wasn't that easy. Uh, you ask any guy that I played with or any guy that I played against, you know, it was very tough to try to post me up. You know, If anybody tried to post me up, for me and my teammates, I did not want any help. You know, leaving the, hey, I'll tell you this. That's <laughs> the other thing, Bugsy, that people don't like. They, they think, like, oh, we'll just – you and Earl Boykins, the one thing you talk about, like, being a team first and being an extension coach, all this other stuff, you guys were also both strong as hell. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like correct. strong. Like you, you have to be so strong at that size to hold up, right? Like it's not like you guys got pushed into the barricade. That's exactly right. And yeah. plus, we understood who knew how to play with their back towards the basket. Yeah. Every point guard didn't know how to play with their back towards the basket. Yep. I'm with it. Uh, I am so excited to see you here on Mondays, the National Civil Rights uh, Museum. Uh, you, Elvin Hayes. Alan Houston. It's a great group. Great group. Um, awesome. Awesome. I'm so honored to be a part of it. Yeah, and uh, so excited for everything that you got going on in Charlotte, and we'll see you here on Monday. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys having me. All right, bud. Muggsy Bogues. Uh, you mentioned the bench pressing thing. Yep. Uh, I just looked it up. Earl Boykins. Yes. It's around the same height as Muggsy. Uh, his max bench press was 315. Woo! People, uh, I've had, I, I had people tell me that, like, you know how, um, you know how, like, you get them in the post or whatever, and, like, somebody will put an elbow in your back, whatever, yeah. and they told me that, like, if, if Earl Boykins did that, you did not move. <laughs> and you got to remember, like, I mean, and not, and not to mention, like, everything from his, from his chest to his arm, it's all, like, close, so it's just, like, so it was like a rock. <laughs> well, the, the you other... know what I mean? He, like, tightens up, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, and you're, like... You're like not moving. <laughs> the other, but the other thing with that is your core has to be so strong to be yeah. able to do that. And also, those two swiped everything. Yeah, the fast. Your zone. ball, the ball's low. They're getting it. Two. Two. Hey, shout out to Uncle Tyrone, uh, Uncle Tyrone Muggsy Bogues. He answered the phone just like my uncle would. <laughs> shout out. Also, he also a sneaky shout out to Sonny Vaccaro with Miles Davis. <laughs> You guys catch that one? Oh, no. man. 
He's at LaMelo Ball, Miles Davis. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, of the, uh, yeah. One, of the, one of the great jazz artists yeah. of all time, Miles shut Davis. Up, man. Shut up, man. Gordon Haywood. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> he got Uber right. right. He, he got is your Uber right. right. It's my uncle, man. Yeah. Uncle Tyrone, man. Shout out to Uncle Tyrone, Muggsy Bogues, man. I can't I wait to see I him wonder if he moment. calls Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wayne. Yes. Yeah. Dude, we he calls rolled, Kroger, we rolled Kroger's. Up on, we rolled up on him at the All-Star game right by the VR thing. Mm-hmm. Like the virtual reality shooting thing that Roser played against Bugsy Bogues, and uh, it just so, that was one of the weirdest things. We were there, turned the corner, Bugsy Bogues right there, and it was one of those where you're like, you're starstruck, like because you're just not expecting it. Like we're in the mix of all these, like it's all these games and all this crap that's like going on at the at the what's at the at the at the All Star Weekend. Um, Fan fest, I guess is what it was. Yeah. And I turn, boom, he's right there. And so immediately, my reaction was, Muggsy Bones! You, <laughs> you know? did scream it really loud. Yeah. yeah. He like turned around and you're like, oh shit. And uh, this is why this thing was so weird. Do you guys remember this? He's there. There's a damn Mitchell and Ness pop up next to him. Yep. And they had a Muggsy Bogues. That's where I got the yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm going to buy this jersey for my son. Will you sign it? He's like, of course. Yeah, he was the Of coolest. course I'll sign it. He was the coolest. And so William has a signed Muggsy Bogues jersey. It's amazing. Shout out. Man. And it was like the it was like the Mitchell and S, the old school Hornets, the pinstripe aqua one. I love that That's one, That's the too. elite color, yeah. Great. That colorway is ridiculous. Yes. Hornets got some good colors in general. Yes. Yeah, shout out Muggsy Bogues, man. I'm looking forward to I hope we get to meet him. He gets hurt. You get to meet him. Yeah. He'll be around. Yeah. And he's man of the people. Oh yeah. And I love here. I didn't know he was an ambassador for the Hornets. That's great. Yeah. That's pretty dope. That's you awesome. know what I mean? Really, really cool. Um, but yeah, he'll be here. Alan Houston will be here. Also, uh, Elvin Hayes uh, will be here, and so it'll be super fun. We're not doing a show on Monday um, because the symposium will be going on. Starting at like I think one o'clock, right? Yeah, it'll be one one to two, and then yeah, it will be all set up for that. One to two will be the symposium, and then at two o'clock we'll obviously have the pregame leading into it. We are also we're broadcasting this and that MLK game locally, so watch the local channel. Yeah, show I know love, it's going to be on national television. Um, tape it if you if you got to yeah. see the national broadcast. Yeah. Um, but anyway, tonight is nine o'clock. Which is, it's a disgrace. Oh, it's, it's going to be fun as hell. No. No. Disgrace. No, I'm. It's a disgrace. I want to be asleep. Yeah. It's, really I, dis- it's Friday night. No. Yeah. And, I'm like yeah. 85 years it's old. It's a central yes. time game. This is ridiculous. You're all wild. No. <laughs> he said no. No. Bro, people are going to be drunk as hell in the arena tonight. I'm not. Yeah, that's true. Me either. I'm going to yeah, be I'm tired gonna be, as hell. I'm gonna, I'm, it's so if, I, if I were going to the game and like going to go out all night, yeah. okay. But instead, no, I'm going to be we're upset. doing a post game show that's not going to end until midnight. Yeah, I'm, yeah. De- Devin, I'm old, bro. Yeah, yeah Devin, I'm going to be pissed off that it's ten thirty and the second half has just started. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that time. Dude, you stay up to like two a.m. anyway. No, I don't. We're going to be we're going to be on we're going to be on the air until midnight, and then. I'll probably get home at like twelve forty-five. By the time I get out of the arena, drive home, everything. Right, and then I got to be up in the morning. Uh, we got a baseball card show in town. Oh god! Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah. sports These cards. Guys. Sports cards. Yeah, mid south. Mid south. Sports card fun. show in Bartlett, the Bartlett M- Municipal Center. Hashtag sports cards. Hashtag, hashtag sports. fun. Oh yeah. man, it's it's grown a lot. I can tell. There's like now a lot of dealers there. There's, there's like. 50, 60 tables there now. Okay. I got a bunch of John Morants. Yeah. Turn up, y'all. I'm going to try to flip them for another now, If you want to get some Ja cards or Jaren cards, yeah. anybody interested in Grizz cards, like dude, everybody's got oh, them. If, if Rosa had local. them all, if y'all want Grizz cards, from, no, from I, Troy Bell to oh, John oh, yeah. Morant. No, I, to, talk, I talked to Brevin last night. He's got like, the rat ones. I've got all the good ones. <laughs> I've, got good, I've got good stuff. I've got good Ja and Jaren cards. Well, I've got to, uh, every Grizzly but I got a bunch of Grizzlies. I talked to Brevin last night. I got, I got, I got a BK Grizzlies card. I'm gonna get him to sign it tonight. I told him he was like, "Yeah, man, I'll sign it for you." So, yeah. You gonna get Troy Bell to sign you his asked too? Asked Brevin Knight for his autograph. Yeah, that's so weird, bro. We got the same birthday. Scorpios goaded for life. For life, goaded. 
for life. Like a, like a, he, and he has a hat. His hat's are no cap. He's really like I need oh, to get. I need, I, need, I need to get my Conchar jersey signed. Oh, then. yeah. It. AKA Jitty. Yeah. Put it like up there. Yeah. So I could put it up. Yeah. Uh, put it up there. Jitty man. Conchar. What if he backs it up with another seventeen rebounds? <laughs> Dude. Seven, no, I, I think you mean 34. 34 rebounds. Yeah, hey. expecting 34. No Porzingis tonight, bro. Jaren's getting his award before the game tonight. What award? Uh, he got the NBA, Care, NBA Cares Community yeah. Assist Award. He yeah. did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Trip, man. How cool is that? Yeah. For, uh, yeah. uh, uh, for uh, the stuff over the Christmas holidays? He, over on Christmas holidays, he's continued uh, pushing the Memphis community and uh, showing love in the Memphis community. That's so awesome, shout, man. Shout out yeah. Trip, man. Shout out Trip. He's getting an NBA Cares Award. Yeah. There he goes. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, Trip! That's awesome. Yeah. Good for him, man. Yeah. Keep voting for both of them, Ja and Jaren, for All Star. Ja showed some love to the fans last night in his post game. Someone asked about how does it feel to be second in All Star voting because you know we play Luca tonight, who's third. And uh, he was like, I just want to thank everybody for showing love. He's like, I don't think people love me that much. Well, twelve. Everybody well, loves they do you, twelve. Man. People were trading in Steph Curry jerseys and Steve Nash jerseys to get their jerseys. And yesterday. Carson Edwards jerseys. And Carson Edwards jerseys. That was hilarious. The fact that there was a Carson Edwards jersey. <laughs> and I got to tell you something. There was another one. Everybody focused on the Carson Edwards one because it was like, I mean, that's just, that's so random. It's I understand everybody focusing on that. Let me tell you. Amongst that list, and we didn't get a count, did we? I don't think so. Of who was what. Uh But there were the different names that got reported. If you saw them and everybody was, like, jumping on the Carson Edwards, like, Carson Edwards, what? You know, and the headliners were obviously some people turning in Ja, Curry, or I'm sorry, uh, Curry, Zion. Uh, Ridiculous to turn in a Jordan. Yeah. That's, just, that's ridiculous. Just buy the kid a friggin' John jersey. <laughs> yeah, also ridiculous. You know what I mean? Also, like, what's wrong with you? Also ridiculous turning in a Penny Hardaway Magic jersey. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, what are you doing, wild. man? Like, dude, if it, Buy the kid a jersey. Yeah. yeah. Enough. No, you don't. Yeah, like, turning, <laughs> in, turning in legends? Like, no. That's, dude, you don't turn in the legends. But jerseys. everybody focused on Carson Edwards. The sneaky funniest to me. Was somebody having an Andre Miller jersey? I was <laughs> yeah. like, what? That's even weirder than Carson Edwards yeah. to me. Yeah, because what? Carson Edwards is like, a lo- like it was like, I loved him. At per- Maybe I'm a Purdue fan. Yeah. Maybe I'm a Celtics fan that like, I- this guy was so fun. He just like was, he was the story of the tournament. It was like a yeah. Curry-esque mm-hmm. run in that NCAA tournament. I could see getting caught up in that. He gets drafted by a team. He buy Carson Edwards. And it's like, dude, this is fun, right? And then it's turned out poorly, right? But Andre <laughs> Miller is just a straight. Where, where the hell did who, who, who appreciated Andre Miller? So yeah. It's just a strange jersey to have. Yeah, bro. It really is. Bagging down people from the three-point line. Like, who Like who said my favorite, <laughs> my favorite player is Andre Miller? I'm gonna buy Andre Miller. That's an odd one to have. Yeah, man, that's that's weird. I said Andre Miller. <laughs> hey, but now they got Jaren and Jaw jerseys, man. They were happy to get them too. So shout out to those kids, and uh, yeah, excited about tonight. Nine o'clock tip, baby. Yo, if we thought the the arena was, you remember that Phoenix game a couple earlier this season? It was a late tip, and the arena was like we were getting our ass kicked, and people were still there. Mm-hmm. Tonight's going to be a night where we're, we're going to win the game and people are going to be lit the whole night. Yeah. Because it's 9 o'clock. They're going to go to. No, you're excited go because what? then it, like, you, I. Yeah, oh, Devin, I going out. Yes, Devin you we don't have a game till Monday. We know you're going to 10. Yeah. Right I'm not going out. Yeah. No, but they, cap, that's why. You, cap, yep. Give him the cap. Yeah, put give the cap him the, on oh, Devin. put the cap on put Devin. Put the cap on yeah, Look, I'm not going we out. understand. I'm not this, going out. But because if we have this game, there's no lag time. You can walk straight from the arena to where you want to go. Yeah. Roser and I got to drive home. Yeah. Well, now I live down here. I live down here, so it's easy for me to drive home. But it's like, I, yeah. dude, I want to be up early. I don't want to freaking be out. You know, I don't. I don't want to be up till two to three in the morning. I want to. I want to be go to bed around midnight. I want to wake up at like six or seven a.m. Hey, give him like make a- myself a nice warm breakfast. Roser and I exchange, uh, on our group text. You will admit on the weekends, Roser and I have exchanged fifty texts by the time you wake <laughs> yeah, up. There's no doubt about it. You're the no only. Doubt. No, 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 no,
is hard capping, almost in luxury tax territory. <laughs> They put it. They put it on you. No, they put it on you. It was on me. Yeah, I saw it on you. I'm not the capping. Chris did not cap. They know the business around there. Thank you, Jacob. Don't put Devin was capping. They know I don't cap. They they think you're. They're gonna. They're gonna let you. uh, They think you're gonna let them in the VIP booth. (laughs) They don't know. You're gonna act like. Hey, look, guys. He's gonna act like he doesn't know you if you see him there. (laughs) Hey, I'm not that guy, man. Anytime I see anybody I know, I show love. A couple guys bought me shots. To come That's not what I heard. Someone said they, they ran into you last week and you told them to kiss your ass. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I know. <laughs> I'm obviously big kidding. Oh, hey, we're high... all nice if you meet us. Yeah, we're you're all nice. You're nice not. Nice <laughs> yes, I you am. Just ignore people. Yeah, no, you I do don't. Ignore people. No, I don't ignore people. You're Johnny ignorer. I do not ignore people. People are like, Roser. Roser, no, Roser, no, Roser. That is, that is that is cap. You have capped twice now in the last Listen, five. You minutes won't of the even. Show. You won't. Uh, 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 are you going to make a Cowboy Niner bet or not? Yeah, let's do this. You're sorry, bro. No, let's do jerseys. I'll wear a jersey again. I've already done that. That's fine. All right, fine. Uh, you got to wear a jersey Tuesday show. Okay. That's it on NFL yeah. notes. Yeah. Since you don't want to go hard. For NFL notes, either one of us has to wear. Uh, oh, that'd be great. I, I don't want to wear a 49er jersey. I promise you that. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy. About you don't that. want to wear a goat Rapolo jersey. Oh, I may give you a weird one or Please. goat Kittle. No, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm not a- gonna let you wear the. I wouldn't no. let you wear the Carlos Hyde because you'd enjoy wearing the Carlos Hyde. Let me tell you something. Because it says El hey, Guapo hey, on the back. Hey, <laughs> let me tell you something. I am gonna bring the tightest ass jersey <laughs> for you, little squeeze. You will. You gonna look like a damn sausage in that thing. No, and I'm gonna. Yep. Bring down and no. hope it rips. No. Bring one of Williams' old jerseys. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I can't, not gonna be, I'm gonna bring him like a Romo or a Demarcus <laughs> Ware, one of them old school ones I have. I won't be able to fit. Huh? I won't be able to fit. Oh, we're gonna fit you in there. Crop top. Fitting you in there. <laughs> Crop top roser. Yeah. We're sliding you on in there, you old summer sausage. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks to Muggsy Bogues. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to John Rose across the glass. Thanks to John Conchar. Until Tuesday. We gone.